Hi there, in DaVinci Resolve there's two main workflows you can use when color grading and you're going to want to know about both of them. You're going to want to know this because you don't want to potentially create problems for yourself in the future and you also want to pick the workflow that suits you better and creates the quickest color grading results. I'm going to show you both workflows in this video and give you a few pros and cons to each approach. Let's head into Resolve and we'll get started. Both of these two workflows start by coming up to the file menu, coming down and choosing project settings. Once the project settings box opens, click on this color management section. The two workflows I'm showing you in this video are not the only workflows you can use, but they're the two most common ones, especially if you're starting out with color grading. There's some more advanced workflows, things like ACES, but you don't have to worry about those, especially if you're not working with other teams or colorists or visual effects artists. The first workflow I'm going to show you is the automatic color management workflow. I'm going to click on this box and I'm going to choose DaVinci YRGB Color Managed. When we click on this box, we get a few more options. Clicking on this color processing mode gives you the choice between standard dynamic range and high dynamic range. As it says here, you can use this version for both HDR and SDR wide gamut deliverables. But if we switch back to standard dynamic range, you can use this option when almost all or all of your footage that you're going to be color grading is not HDR. Next up, we've got this output color space. You can think of this output color space as telling DaVinci Resolve what video file you're going to be rendering right at the end and effectively what your deliverable is going to be that you're going to either upload something like YouTube or pass on to a client if you're working for a client. If you want more control over these options, uncheck automatic color management. Watch what happens when I untick this. The color processing mode changes and now we have more control over what's going to happen. And if you want even more control, you can set this to custom and you get all of these options, but please don't be scared. We're not gonna use that in this tutorial. Instead for color processing mode, you want to switch this to HDR DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. I'll explain what that is in just a second. Next, choose your output color space. So if we're delivering for YouTube, we might choose something like Rec 709 Gamma 2.4 or Gamma 2.2 but there's all of these other options. For this demo, we're going to go with Rec 709 Gamma 2.4, so click that. So what exactly is this DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate? This is a color space that is massive, and by color space, I just mean the individual available choices for a single pixel to be of a certain color. DaVinci Wide Gamma Intermediate allows you to represent a massive amount of different colors, more so than your camera probably records. But what this does is it allows us to do our color grading in a space where our changes aren't going to bash against the edge of a smaller color space. Now, color spaces are a massive topic in and of themselves, so don't worry about it too much. Just know for the purposes of this video that we're using DaVinci Wide Gamma Intermediate because it's going to protect us from crushing any color information. There are more advanced options down here, but you don't need to worry about those for the minute. So we're going to go with DaVinci YRGB Color Managed, and it's the color managed part that's important for this first workflow. This is the color managed or automatic color management workflow. Once you've got these settings, click save. What this automatic color managed workflow will do is it will recognize clips that were shot on different cameras and depending on the settings in that camera, the color space and the gamma, it's going to automatically map those color schemes or those gamuts into DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. And hope I haven't lost you so far. This will all become clear in just a second. I'm going to switch over to the media page and I want to show you the footage we've got here. Here's all of the clips in our project. We've got a mixture of clips shot on different cameras. I'm going to right click on this header and I'm going to make sure that input color space is checked. And now we get this new column. The input color space is DaVinci Resolve's way of trying to tell you or work out what camera and what color space and what settings were used when this video clip was recorded. Not all cameras record that information in their video clips, however. These clips were shot on a Sony a7S III using S-Log3. 
But because the camera hasn't written that information into the file and DaVinci Resolve has no way of knowing that, that's why it just says project for all of these items. If I scroll down here to this file, this was shot on an Osmo Pocket 3 using HLG mode. And you can see DaVinci Resolve has recognized that and it's displaying the input color space as Rec 2100 HLG. These other files were shot on the Osmo Pocket 3, but in standard color mode. So these are just saying Rec 709. Rec 709 is just like your basic everyday color space. It's the color space that most of the videos on YouTube will have been shot in, for example. So it's not a fancy HDR color space or anything like that. I'm just going to come back to the edit page and we're going to add one of these S-Log3 clips to the timeline. And you can see how washed out and low contrast and low saturation this looks. That's because S-Log3 is a log image and it needs to be converted to whatever you're viewing it on on a specific screen. Like pretty much every screen can display Rec 709. So we need a way to convert this S log 3 image to Rec 709. I'm going to open up the color tab and here's an empty node. We've not got any changes happening in this node yet. In this first automatic color managed workflow, we can get DaVinci Resolve to recognize what that clip is, convert it to DaVinci Wide Gamma Intermediate, and that's the space where, remember, we're doing all of our changes, and then automatically convert it at the end from DaVinci Wide Gamma Intermediate into Rec 709. And it knows to convert it to Rec 709 at the end because of our project settings, this output color space. Rec 709. So why does it still look so washed out here and low contrast? That's because we come back to the media page. DaVinci Resolve doesn't actually know that these clips were shot with S-Log3, so we have to tell it. To do that, we can right click on one of these clips, come up to input color space, and then find the camera that this footage was shot on, in this case, Sony. DaVinci Resolve knows all of these different ways of filming on Sony cameras. In this case, I know it was S Gamut 3 Cine S Log 3. I'm gonna click that, and straight away in this window, you can see that preview now looks more like a real image. You can do this for multiple clips. I'm gonna select this first one, hold down shift, select this last S-Log3, right click, choose input color space, come back to Sony and choose S-Log3 again. Now this column is showing S-Log3 for all of these clips. And if I select any one of these, we can see it's looking better already. And if we head back to the color page, this clip is now looking more like a real clip and not that flat washed out S-Log3 look. And if we just went and exported this straight away, it would export a correct looking Rec 709 output video file. If we come back to the media page, scroll down here, remember that we had this HLG clip. Let's go and add that to the timeline. Just drag it down and we'll switch over to the color page. Now DaVinci Resolve knows that this is HLG. It's converting that to DaVinci Wide Gamut. And then because everything is in that DaVinci Wide Gamut intermediate space, regardless of the camera it was shot on, it does that same conversion from DaVinci Wide Gamut to Rec 709. So even if we've mixed up S-Log3, Rec 709 and HLG clips from different cameras in our edit, they will all get converted properly to Rec 709 when we export the video. Okay, so the advantages of this approach are that it's really easy once you've set that color input space, everything just starts to look normal and then you can go and add your tweaks on top of it. So this can be a lot faster than the second method I'm gonna show you, but the second method offers you a bit more control, a bit more visibility about what's going on and a bit more flexibility. All right, let's go and use workflow two. I'm gonna come up to the file menu, come back to project settings, make sure we're on color management and I'm gonna change this from white YRGB color managed to just DaVinci YRGB. I'm still going to set the timeline color space to DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate, again, because we want that big color space to be grading inside of. For the output color space, choose Rec 709 Gamma 2.4 and then click save. But look what just happened to our HLG image. It's kind of looking a bit washed out now. If I go back to the S-Log3 image, once again, it's looking all washed out and desaturated. That's because in this workflow, it's up to us to do that conversion from the source camera to DaVinci Wide Gamma Intermediate and from DaVinci Wide Gamma Intermediate to the export format, in our case, Rec 709. So let's take this S-Log3 clip as an example. We'll just make the nodes a bit smaller. So the first thing we need to do before we do any creative color grade changes, we need to do that technical transformation from S-Log3 to DaVinci Wide Gamut. Luckily, that's really easy. We need to open up the effects and either search for color space transform or find it in the list and drag that on to the first node. 
this is going to give us all of these settings. The input color space is what the camera was using. In our case, Sony S Gamma 3 Cine. I know this because I shot this footage. If you're editing footage from someone else, then you're going to need to ask them what it was shot in. I also know that the input gamma was S Log 3. It's a big topic, but very quickly, the color space is the model or the space or the bubble in which all of the colors can be recorded in. And the gamma is how dark and light parts are represented when the video file has been recorded. The output color space is not going to be Rec. 709. It's going to be DaVinci Wide Gamut. And the output gamma is going to be DaVinci Intermediate. So this S-Log3 video is now being converted to DaVinci Wide Gamma Intermediate. Monitors don't display DaVinci Wide Gamma Intermediate. They display something like Rec. 709 or HDR. So what you're seeing at the minute on screen is not accurate because the screen is not expecting DaVinci Wide Gamma Intermediate. And if you exported this video, it would look like this. Pretty terrible. we we'll just make a bit more space and I'm going to right click and add a new serial node. To keep track of things, we can right click and add a node label. I'll just say to DaVinci Wide Gamut. And what we're going to do in this node is we're going to take DaVinci Wide Gamut and turn it into Rec. 709. Once again, we're going to use the color space transform. So we'll drag that effect onto the second node. This time the input color space is going to be DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. And that's because in this area here, that's what this line is outputting or this node is outputting. The output color space from the second node is going to be the thing we're going to export. In our case, Rex over 09, Gamma 2.4. And as soon as I click on that, watch what's happened to the image. It now looks normal again. And if we export this, it'll be totally fine and look like this in the video file when we open it on other computers or upload it to YouTube. And what we've done here in these two nodes is essentially the same as what DaVinci Resolve was doing automatically for us a minute ago in the first workflow. It's just this time we have more visibility over what's happening. There's one more benefit to this approach. I'll show you that in a second. But now we can just go and add nodes however we would add nodes before. They have to be between these two nodes though. And it's inside these nodes where we're going to do our color grading. For example, we might change the X exposure, add another node to increase the contrast, add another node to change the colors. And all three nodes here are working in that DaVinci Wide Gamut intermediate color space. One of the advantages of this approach is we can clearly see what's going on, even though we've had to do a bit of extra work. If I open up the effects, we've got access to all of these different options when it comes to these color space transforms. We can see what's happening. It's not like a black box with the automatic color managed workflow. The other benefit is we can actually add nodes after it's been converted to Rec. 709. Normally you're not going to want to do this because once you convert to Rec. 709, you might be throwing away some of the color information, but this can be useful in certain situations. For example, I often use this after the Rec. 709 conversion, and I've got a special plugin which I'm gonna cover in another video to help you gauge whether skin tones look correct. The problem is just looking at the colors on the screen is not necessarily gonna give you the whole picture. And that's where scopes come in. Scopes allow you to visualize what's happening and that's exactly what you'll learn about in this next video. I'm Jason Roberts, this is DaVinci Dojo. Please subscribe. Hopefully I'll see you in the next one.